this is this is working this is a battlefield and a okay. training ground so that's really in short yeah all right so beautiful ladies out there you can send your application through your entity <laughs> dr onzi kwame Nkrumah is single and uh he's still looking up to find a very beautiful intelligent respectful woman for a Ho wife hopefully Ghanaian next time yeah Hopefully a Ghanaian. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully a Ghanaian. Uh, any specific features? Tall, mm -hmm. short, well, fair, dark? Well, a uh, Pan-Africanist who loves God. These are the two items, really. Someone who loves Africa and who loves God. That should be fine. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. um, about your dad, aside from Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. the founder of this country. Yeah. The fact that nobody can take it away from him. Yeah. We can massage and garnish the history of this country, mm. but it will remain the same. Mm. That Osajifo founded this country and the first president of the land. Mm. How do you miss your dad? Tremendously. But on the other hand, I feel his presence wherever I go. Mm -mm. How? Yeah. Well, uh, the spirit is there, number one. And... Um, when people prophesy over me or recognize him in me, people from the First Republic, when we come across each other, um, I will not mention names, but there is a, a wife of one of the ministers of the First Republic. Every time she would meet me or shake hands with me, she would collapse and faint. And then I stopped, obviously, shaking hands with her. Her husband told me, my wife is still in love with your dad. That's why any time she comes across with anything connected mm -hmm. with him. So the presence is always there. So okay. some people feel it if they're tuned to it. And some people obviously they're indifferent because they're not aware. So, but I'm aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You miss him? Yes, of course. I, and I miss the fact that if he was here, mm -hmm. Africa would look very different and people will try to shape up uh, in a very different way. But hopefully there's enough of him that in terms of culture, heritage, legacy, uh, and few of us who follow him yeah. faithfully to still carry his uh, vision and conclude what he wanted to achieve in his life and he was not allowed to achieve. So until that the spirit will not rest mm. and will always be hovering around and will always, people like me will always feel his presence, but uh, admittedly not everybody. Not would. everybody, I do too. I mean, and I believe that Nkrumah is not dead. Yeah. He's still around, waiting to see the right thing before he will finally rest. go to rest. We all have fathers, you know. Yeah, of course. And um, we all believe in our fathers. You were fortunate your father was once a president of this country. Mm. You are here today. What kind of a father did you find in Osajifo? The greatest thing about, uh, about him that he was the most selfless person I can think of, uh, perhaps after Christ. I mean, as a human being, I mm -hmm. don't know anyone who is more selfless than him. And... Uh, he wouldn't have issues like, for example, when people say he's not the only founder or whatever. He wouldn't have bothered with all that, mm. uh, you know, nonsense. To him, it's just petty stuff. So uh, I usually try to rise above this. But I, I, whenever I'm asked, is he the only founder? To me, he is. Because okay. Ghana, in its shape, in its geography, in its history, the way it is, I've written once an article along those lines, and I think my views are well known. Um, the others had different vision of gradual, uh, progressive, some form of autonomy, which wasn't full independence, number one. And number two, it was not immediate. They had a, a long-term view that uh, they can work with a colonial uh, system for a while, be, 50 years or something like Hong Kong, I don't know what years they were negotiating. Hong Kong was 99 years before it went back. And, uh, but anyhow, I'm glad that uh, the Nkrumah campaign for independence now will never won the day, won the argument, and the others have lost it. But now they all want 
to be considered as fellow founders, fine. It doesn't really change the history. You cannot rewrite history. History is history. Facts okay. are facts. So um, you cannot take that away. I mean, some people obviously, for their own reasons, will want to dilute his role or uh, make him into just another leader. Well, fine. So uh, how old were you when he died? I was um, 15 exactly, or, or just a little over 15. A little over 15. So mm -hmm. you saw him in press saying, you remember some of the of the very fond memories of him maybe taking you to school taking you to the club taking you no. to somewhere to play no. or no. if you had you came in contact with your dad something yeah. that both of you did together no you know okay you know that he never had a the time for the family uh, yeah for the family and he was always devoted and that's why i'm saying he's completely selfless and uh, he lived like a soldier really to the end and uh, he sacrificed all for Ghana and for Africa. And I think Ghana is in his debt, and Africa owes him a great debt forever and ever. Uh, but uh, hopefully we can live up to 10% or even 1% of his mm. selflessness and his greatness and his sacrifice um, and achieve some of, if not all of his objectives, hopefully we can achieve most of them before we are gone. That's my prayer. As a teenager then, mm. was there any other particular thing you, you loved that you wished that your father could have done for you? But because of devotion to this country mm. and united in Africa, he was not able to do that for you? Um, not because that will make me selfish. My views are selfless like his. My views, I would like to see Ghana at her best and Africa united. My prayer almost, not every day, but very regular prayer that, Lord, I would like to see Africa united before I'm gone. Even for one day, I would like to see and enjoy a united Africa. Okay. And then if we do achieve that before I'm gone, I would leave in my will that we shall have a great party and okay. a great celebration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So where are your other siblings, your brothers and your sisters, where are they? Um, Professor Francis is retired, a doctor, I think um, all Ghanaians know is, him. Is, is Professor here in this country? Or he's not? Uh, well, he's retired now. He's, he's emeritus retired. professor at Noguchi, but okay. uh, he doesn't practice. Uh, he's in his 70s and I think he's done his uh, days as a pediatrician and mm. public health doctor. And he taught in Zimbabwe for seven years or so. So he's done a lot, but he's retired at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And, and Seku, is he here? Um, then, yeah, Seku's the youngest. Okay. Uh, the children of Madame Fateh are three, Gamal in Egypt. He just retired as a journalist okay. uh, or as an associate editor of Al Ahram. And then uh, Samia, second, Seik was the last. Okay. So do yeah. you guys meet sometimes? Talk about yourself, uh, talk about your father, um, achievement and everything, you do that? We're not really close. I mean, with Francis, uh, we meet only in official uh, okay. events, really. But Gamal, whenever I'm in Egypt, uh, I like to meet him, have a meal and stuff. He's very... He's a very jolly and social guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Samia and Seiko, I'm not that close to them. You know. Any reason you know, is just because of uh, time, say? Um, well, I'm sure there's some reasons, but it's not really important to... Important. Would you like to get closer to them? You being the, the eldest, I mean. Yeah, I love them. I mean, I'm older than uh, these two, um, older than three. And I love them all, but uh, it's in their own time, they hopefully will realize. Is, is it true that children of Osage for you guys are divided on certain lines, either political, social, economic, ideology, whatsoever? You guys are divided on certain well, lines. First, the mothers are different. So okay. there are three different mothers, obviously. That's number one difference. Two, uh, well, ideological divide. Gamal is a Pan African, is par excellence. Mm -hmm. But when I tried to quiz him if he can be a CPP or what, <laughs> can he come back to Ghana and let's work together to rebuild? He said, oh, at that time, 
Samia just came from Italy. He said, oh, work with Samia, because I think I am, you know, getting old to Has he been here before? Come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gamal comes, you know, but not often, not, not often at all, yeah. Uh, but when something official, like funerals or whatever, he would come. And uh, then um, Seiko, I don't know his political agenda, really. I, I, um, I asked him once, why does he hop in different mm. camps? And uh, he said he's a political activist, so that's his description of a political activist. Mm. He can hop from uh, this one to that one. Okay, now let's talk about so, the CPP. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, two, three questions about the CPP, and then we'll go into the principles and the person yeah. uh, Saji for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the founder mm. and the first president of this country. Yes. CPP, what's happening to you? Oh, CPP is still in a mess. Uh, the mess is because the other two parties, they find it necessary for their reasons, best known to themselves, but I think most Ghanaians know um, they always have their people inside of CPP. So there's always proxy wars <laughs> in, <laughs> in fighting within CPP. My desire is to be part of cleaning CPP. If I fail, then uh, I will declare it that I failed. When but you fail, you will declare that you I failed. Will, yeah, I will come in the public domain to say I have tried and I failed. But until then, there's still hope. Uh, my return to the, you know, the political scene here, uh, to the Ghanaian scene, gives hope to a lot of people to revive CPP, mm. that I am not giving up and I refuse to give up until I've exhausted every energy possible. Are you aware any time the CPP is formidable, mm. the two leading political parties tremble on their feet? Yeah. Are you aware of that? I'm painfully aware of that. Okay. Mm. So if you are painfully aware of that, mm. how gamefully are you going to organize the CPP? Uh, to the best of my ability, but I'm also aware that they, they invest money, they invest logistics, they send people... And they also sponsor others. If they don't send them, they sponsor them. If they are willing to be sponsored or they're keen to be sponsored. You mean the other parties sponsor the other people? Two inside of CPP. Okay. So we have a microcosm of a micro ecosystem of the country inside of CPP. <laughs> <laughs> so how is that possible? Uh, yeah, so you can have a fight in parliament between the let's say two parties and you can have that in a smaller way within the CPP. CPP and it's amazing really it's I mean it might be an interesting topic to write about one day if I get time for my private life again it's so amusing but in a painful way uh, it's tragic really but uh, that's what it is but nobody would admit to it obviously uh, nobody would say, yes, I'm for MPP or I'm for... But you know they're a sponsor. And you know they're accepting money. You and know some of them being sponsored by the two uh, we, Yes, yes, we know. And they, uh, some evidence show up sometimes. Are you comfortable talking about them in person? Names and all that? Uh, because they are still part of CPP or okay. they want to remain as if to appear as part. Let us not blow the... So the how, how would you be able to clean up this mess, knowing very well, mm. MPP is a very strong political party. Yeah. The NDC is a very strong political party. Yeah. You have the young members being sponsored to hold very, maybe, I don't know, sometimes. very sensitive yeah, positions. Some, sometime how leading. how yeah. would you be able to do that? It's not very easy, as you can imagine, especially I feel sidelined by, obviously, the different camps. Uh, nobody, yeah. because they know I'm for the real thing, I'm for the, the rightful thing to be done. Mm. And I am for um, my loyalty is strictly Osaja Foz and the Nkrumah legacy. So if you are sponsored by one side or the other, mm. you are not going to come close to me, okay. you know, and, and open up. So it's not easy, and uh, that's why I'm saying it's a possibility of cleaning or not cleaning, and maybe 50-50 chance. But okay. uh, it's worth doing because why, I may not forgive myself. I mean, I meet. Ghanaians in America, in UK, in uh, mainland Europe, 
And they always urge me, can't you go and fix your father's party? Can't you re instead of some years, some election, uh, you get the party, you know, being sponsored by PP mm -hmm. or NDC or whatever, and they sell out. So please go because people will trust you that you are not going to be bribed or bought by anybody, when, which is true. Nobody can afford to buy me because I'm not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> And that would be very expensive, so uh, and I couldn't do it anyway. I always say I want my dead body. I mean, nobody can even try. Or well, they can try, but they would not get anywhere. So um, it's not an easy task. Okay. But uh, uh, so I'm admitting in public domain, I don't know if I will succeed to, but if I cannot succeed, then a remnant or a rump of the true necromost mm -hmm. should... Uh, declare themselves as the new true CPP. Do you see the current executives of your father's party mm. really willing mm. and working, mm. one, to the interest of your dad, mm -hmm. not him as a person, yeah. but based on his principles and his ideology and understanding mm -hmm. of building a better Ghana? Do you see them again as people who are willing mm. to, to outgrow uh, this small, petty, petty things and build the CPP or you see otherwise of the current executives of the CPP? Okay, as I said, CPP represents the mess in Ghana. So the mess in Ghana is represented... CPP represents the mess in Ghana. Yeah, so we have a smaller mess in CPP that is representative <laughs> <laughs> of the bigger mess in Ghana. I mean, we're laughing, but it's tragic, really. But anyhow, it, 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 it calls for a laugh. Um, the, all these entities are present. We have those who are true, true, uh, loyal... Um, you know, die-hard necromost, we have those. Mm. We have, obviously, hypocrites who belong to different, but they will never admit because they, they gain from their hypocrisy. So okay. they wouldn't tell you, I'm a hypocrite and I'm paid to be a hypocrite. Nobody would admit to that. But they are there. So, so how can I be more, uh, you know, explicit or, or implicit? I mean, you just take it like it is. I mean, we have all these shades are present. Uh, and there are so uh, others also who are new uh, or who are unaware and quickly they discover, okay. you know, that this is, oh, this is a group like that. This faction is for this. So uh, that is how it is. As the first vice chair of the party, mm -hmm. um, do you go to party meetings? Yeah, of course. I mean, but we have had serious um, handicap because... One of the contestants, she refuses to admit that she lost to be who, the chairperson. That is uh, Frimpoma, Nana Frimpoma. Uh, she still claims that she's the chairperson, and she works by herself. And the other but eight, was she sworn into office? Sorry, was she sworn by office? mistake? And the EC admitted it was erroneously done. <laughs> and the, and I said to the EC, please fix it. They said you have to take us to court. And I don't know why we have to take the easy. Are you on talking terms with her? I used to be close to her. I used to believe that she was genuine initially, but when I discovered, I mean, that's one of the people sponsored by uh, by other parties, you know. So, uh, oh, yeah. So obviously, quickly, I tried to. So talk you, you think she was sponsored by who? NDC or MPP? By MPP. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't know. Do you have any evidence to that? Yeah, uh, two of the leadership uh, were aware, but they all kept it away from me. Mm -hmm. And then they came in public when she decided to keep the money and the cars and whatever. The, which money, which cars? Um, well, you know, it's not necessary to take your time on, on no, air. No, you tell me. I just want to know. I'm interested. She took some cars? Uh, some she money? took cars, monies, and motorbikes. And from who? From MPP. And... Um, and I didn't know. I was sidelined for a long time. But when I discovered it, I had serious argument with her, and I tried to reason with her. And she said, no, it was given to her in her personal capacity. These were not given oh, to so her. So she confirmed that to you? Yeah, that she received those for herself. How many cars, if she told you? Um, I'm aware of three. 
but she owned up to two uh, with a lot of pressure she gave two. Which type of cars were you told? The, the, the one she's keeping is a V8, but the two she gave to the party are pickups. Okay. And then the 20 motorbikes she's still holding to herself or her business, and the money she's still holding to herself. How much money? We, I heard there were several payments, but one of the confirmed payments was 2.7 million. Uh, but million I, what? Um, Ghana cities? Ghana cities, yeah, not dollars. And that came from the NPP? Yeah, I mean, uh, some of those monies were collected in bags, you know, uh, physical <laughs> cash, and two of the leadership members uh, assisted in the first, you know, delivery of those, but apparently the, her son uh, subsequently received further payments. But her son? Yeah, her son. She appointed him as uh, something to do in the party. But I don't even know what's his latest uh, position, according to her. You go to the party office? I do, but um, I'm supposed to use the chair person. Uh, there are two rooms for the chair, but she's refusing to relinquish. I took her to court, and the matter is still uh, not completely resolved. The judge ruled that we should use party internal mechanism. So we're still not concluded, really. So it's an unfortunate situation. That's why I'm saying until we get a substantive chairperson, officially, according to the Central Committee of the party, I'm the acting chairman. Okay. But according to her, she's still she's the, chair. the chairman. Yeah. So, so, so now, this about your chairman. Yeah. You've just confirmed to us that she's yeah. this, somebody being sponsored by the new patriotic party. Yeah. What about your general secretary? Well, there are rumors, but, you know, but I have no evidence. Everybody says, why do you attack from Poma and you don't attack the GS? And I said, well, attack her for what? They say, she's also sponsored. I said, I don't know. Uh -uh. <laughs> I don't that know. your general security was also sponsored? There is a rumor. By who? According well, to the rumor. According who? to the rumor, she is sponsored by NDC, but... Uh, uh, I asked her and she denied it and uh, no evidence, so I, okay. I say no more. So, but then it's it's a rumor, yeah. But if anybody has evidence, please come out. <laughs> <laughs> so, with with all this background information, a few mm -hmm. investigations you've done, mm -hmm. conducted, people giving you snippets of information, left and right. Yeah. And you having this zeal mm -hmm. of rebuilding the CPP. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. You can get through the wool and the woods of this toxic environment and be able well, to build the CPP. Well, it's not a question of being sure, because how can you be sure? But I know it is the rightful thing, if at all possible. So, you know, when there's a war to be fought, you don't say as a soldier, what if I die? Well, if you die, you die for a good cause. Okay. So for this, I just know it's a good cause. Whether I fail or succeed, I will give my best shot. If I fail, then people know at least I've tried, and my father wouldn't surely know I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that is my duty to, okay. to, to him. Let, let and me see to, if this yeah. can be my final question, um, because we are meeting again tomorrow for Sajid Fu's birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, Major worry. General. Um, there are a lot of African leaders um, who claim... No, let me ask this before this. This no, will be my final question. No problem. You, you hear about our, the story, the history mm. of the attainment of independence of this country mm. being twisted and turned mm. every day, every year. You hear a lot of stories, a lot of history. We are trying to every year rewrite the independence history of mm. this country. Yes. People believe that your father is the founder of this country mm -hmm. and the first president. Mm -hmm. Others say that, well, they, we didn't join before and after the struggle mm -hmm. for independence. Your father was not the only person, so we need to honor all the heroes and all. When you hear these kind of, would I, I don't want to use the word distorted, but I'm mm -hmm. tempted to use that, distorted history. Mm -hmm. about the pressing of your father, mm -hmm. the struggle for independence mm -hmm. and all. How do you, as an individual, feel? I feel very sad, but it's worth noting that uh, the one that actually called my father founder was not even Ghana. It was the AU when he was 100. That's 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. The AU declared his birthday 
as a day to be celebrated by every African state. Yeah. You know, all 54 states declared it as Founders Day, 21st of September. And then the late... And it was an apostrophe before the S. Yes, apostrophe, yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> And he was referred to so as yes. I okay. mean, and he's the only one that was accepted to be a statue outside of AU, by the way. The other leaders and the other uh, initial, I mean, there were, you can argue, obviously, that AU was not only founded by him, but even the other people with him were not given the same acknowledgement as he was. Anyway, so the late President Mills um, thought, well, you know, we are not doing ourselves favor here as Ghanaians. We have a great icon, a Ghanaian hero, and we wait to hear instruction from Addis Ababa that we should be one of the many countries to mm -hmm. honor him as the founders for the, uh, for the uh, Organization of African Unity. We should honor him as also our own founder because he is the founder of this country. So the next year, thereafter it became... Founders Day for Ghana. Okay. But the genesis actually started that he was founder for the African unity, and then it was adopted by President Mills to be founders of Ghana. And then obviously we had other people thinking otherwise and changing with that and adding other founders and so forth. You so, think as a country you have not treated your fathers well? Yes, I think it's very unfortunate, but I think he's so much greater than that pettiness, so it doesn't affect his stature really. Either. Whatever they want to call him, it wouldn't affect his greatness. So. My final question, if it could be anyway. Mm -hmm. your, your, your father had this penchant for building a stronger Africa to rub shoulders with the Europeans and that of the Americas. Yeah. And um, people think that he aligned with Russia at then times, also China and uh, tried to develop Ghana. We had almost 442 industries, companies, and, and a lot of them here. Yeah. After his demise, mm -hmm. we had something we call the uh, Divestiture Implementation Committee that mm -hmm. sold virtually everything. Mm -hmm. Or gave them away. Giving them away. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you listen to all the African leaders, mm -hmm. uh, at least those that came from 2000, up until today, they all tell you, oh, we we'll read about Nkrumah, we want to be like Nkrumah, we're trying to do this, we're trying to do that. But Africa still remains the same. Yeah. Why do you think they're still the same? If indeed mm -hmm. they are reading and taking in the things your father wrote or following the things mm -hmm. your dad did. Well, lack of commitment, lack of um, sincerity, lack of uh, understanding. For the lack of knowledge, my people perish. Even God said that. So uh, if the Almighty can say that, so, I mean, Nkrumah can even say it much more. For the lack of knowledge, they don't really know what they're toying with. They don't know the ultimate prize if they really hold on to it, okay. how, how much it will be greater for all of us. I can talk on that and I can write books on that, so I will spare you. But uh, when you have more time, I will tell you more, I'm sure. Thank you so yeah, much, so Dr. Onzi Kwame Nkrumah, the second son mm. of the first president of Ghana. Thank you. Uh, we are meeting tomorrow, so I'm reserving some of the questions so we <laughs> okay. can have a healthy discussion again. With tomorrow. pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're taking a quick break. Um, when we return, I will talk to another CPP man. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, another CPP pressing. Because I actually. A special day for Saji for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah will be 113 tomorrow. He's not dead, so he will be 113 tomorrow. And then we'll be cutting a cake for him. We'll be showing some of his achievements, the things that he did, some of his greatest speech, speeches across the globe that he had to take the, the Chinese president and that of America to be on their feet for two minutes, 29 seconds, clapping for him at the UN. So, get glued to your set today, tomorrow, and all other days. We do it better like nobody else's business. I'll be right back.